Hey everyone, on this episode of Coding with Kate, we are going to be talking about, I think, one of the most important lessons or advice you will ever learn for landing your first coding job. This is something very relevant to me because today is a very exciting day in my life. And you will find that once you are certified as a coder, that most or even all of the positions you'll find say you need one to two years of experience applying codes. But if you're like me and you are taking an online course, you haven't had that opportunity like universities that offer internship and externships where you get that experience. So if you are taking an online program, this is what you need to do to land your first coding job. You might not like everything about it, but it's what you do because you know you want to code or you at least hope you want to code. So you're going to do everything you can to show your new employer that this is what you want to do. So first thing, you need to find an entry level job in the medical records department. That's all you need to do because coding takes place within the medical records department of usually the bigger facilities, hospitals, large clinics, things like that. And doing that, you are getting your foot in the door. So then if a coding position opens up in a year or two or whatever, you will be there to hopefully take that spot. But what's really, really, really important, when you are interviewing for the job on your resume or on your cover letter, things like that, you need to let this new employer know that you are dedicated and motivated to want to code. You are going to do anything you can to make sure that happens. So for me, today's my first day of working in the medical records department at a local hospital. Now I'm only taking the position of a health information clerk or a medical records clerk. Those are the terms that they use. So yeah, I'm not gonna be applying codes or anything like that, but I told them in my cover letter and during my interview that I want more experience handling the medical record and navigating the programs that are used to create and maintain medical records because I think that is going to be very, very useful information when I finally get a coding position. And being in the medical records department, that gives me access to the coders. So if the opportunity presents itself or if I clearly ask them, which I told them I would do, is there time where I can work with the medical coders and to train? and get comfortable with that and see what your policies and protocols are. And once I get certified, then I will ask them, and you should too, can I volunteer my time to help the coders? This is going to offer you that hands-on experience of applying codes. Sure, you're not getting paid for it because you're volunteering, but if you initiate that and tell them, I want to do this without being asked, they are going to learn your work ethic. They are going to see how a dedicated employee you are, how motivated you are, the fact that you want to learn as much as possible, even if you don't have to. So when a position does open up, they already know your skills, your work performance, your work ethic. They know you personally. You've already made a rapport with them so they will be more likely to offer you the position or hire you if you apply. And then you got a coding job and you already know the facility because you've been working there for a year or two, depending on how long it takes for you to get certified and then work your way up to feeling comfortable to actually applying for a coding position. I mean, that's pretty awesome. And let's hope you find a facility that you do truly like working at so then you know that you're gonna be there for a while. And if you don't want to work in a hospital or in a brick and mortar building forever, if you already have a coding job there, when they have a remote coding position open and you have the experience to be a remote coder, you're still working for them, but you get to work from home or wherever it is you're gonna be. So it is a great, great thing to take an entry level position to get your foot in the door and show the employer what your goals are and what you want to do to get there and know that you're not gonna give up until you get there. It, 
it's awesome to be able to do that and for these employers to see that and they hire you because they want you to do that. And I openly said in my interview, yes, I've had experience in the healthcare field, but it was on the patient contact side. So I've never had experience actually looking at and handling medical records. But I want to learn because I think that's a very important component of medical coding. And the only way I'm going to feel comfortable taking a coding position is if I have this experience working with the medical record. And I was enthusiastic about it. I really sold myself because I knew not having the experience in this department or the fact that I haven't been in the healthcare field for a couple of years, usually HR isn't a huge fan of that. They don't like when you have a gap in the field. But clearly I made an impression because they hired me. And today is my very first day. Well, technically it's an orientation, so I'm not actually in medical records today. But tomorrow is my very first day in medical records. So I cannot wait to start learning as much as possible because the more I learn, the more I will understand a lot of the aspects of coding that I don't get in the workbooks. So it's actually really great to have this coding experience for this position, but I'm going to continue to learn about the field. So when I do become a coder, I will feel very comfortable in my skills and my experiences and know that I will be successful in a coding job. So keep that all in mind when you are getting ready to graduate. If you're in an online program, know that, yeah, you'll have to take an entry level job. It might not pay as much as a coder, but the position I got is more than I've ever made. So I was actually expecting to get paid less in this entry level position, but hey, good things happen to very dedicated people. So try really, really hard to put yourself out there and work really, really hard because if you truly want to be a coder, you need to do everything you can to make that happen, even if that means taking an entry level job or not getting paid as much. That's what adults do. And for all of the students that are actually going to a university or a college that offer internship externship, what I suggest, since I'm not, I don't really have that experience with coding, so I'm just throwing out suggestions that might be helpful. I'm not really sure if they'll work, but hey, you might as well try it. During your internships and externships, what I suggest is using as many hours as you possibly can outside of your internship externship hours, volunteering or assisting the coders. So ask them, can I come in on my own time a couple hours a week to work on this type of coding or work with this coder on this or volunteer my time to help with whatever you need? The more you put yourself out there, the more they're gonna be impressed with how much of a go-getter you are and know that you actually want to do this job because with internships and externships, normally, that is the place that is going to offer you a position once you graduate and get certified. So if you already are impressing them with your skill and dedication and knowledge and work ethic and work performance, they will most likely hire you even before you graduate because they're going to be so impressed and they're going to want you on their team. So do whatever you can to give yourself a leg up because with the coding profession, it can be frustrating when you're looking and you're like, I don't have two years of experience applying codes. How am I supposed to find that when I just graduated? No one wants to hire me. Do whatever you can to get to that place. Just try. Put yourself out there. Know that everything is going to be okay. And also know that as you work in whatever facility, working towards being a coder or even as a coder, learn about some of the other positions within the medical records department. The other positions that require certifications or degree programs, so because you already have some of that completed, because you might find that there might be another pathway that you really, really like. But from my experience of searching some of these other degree programs and certifications, they require coding as part of the curriculum. So you are already ready to do that. So you have a lot of flexibility of where you want to go. So I'm keeping my op options open for the RHIT certification, Registered Health Information Technician, and I want to learn more about that. 
I feel like when I'm reading through it, it comes off as more of a leadership role, like a step or two up from my current position as a health information clerk, but you need a certification for it. I also want to talk with the RHITs at my facility and ask them more about that position so I can learn more because that might be an avenue that I want to go in. And I'm also thinking that once I get certified and I gain some experience applying codes in a real setting to maybe go towards teaching coding courses or training new coders that come to the facility I'm working at or something where I get to teach people because I really do enjoy this method and I just kind of like teaching. So I want to keep my options open because if I do want to go that path, I'm already preparing myself of what do I need to do? What have I already completed to get myself ready for that? So keep your options open. Learn as much as you can. Don't give up. Don't feel discouraged. You can always go online to forums where you can find other people asking questions. Although I will say, when I was looking at forums on this topic of landing a job, a lot of the posts were from before 2015. So they're a little outdated and I'm not sure why I couldn't find any newer ones. Keep in mind those dates because that might skew the topic that we're discussing. So don't get discouraged if you read some of that because it might be from 2010. And that's pretty outdated for the coding field. I wish everyone good luck on their path to being a certified coder. If you need help with just advice on how should I go about doing this, you can always comment in the bottom or below this video and I will give you as much advice as much advice as possible and if I find any articles or anything like that that will be important I will share it also keep in mind I do have a Twitter handle that if you want to tweet me about anything you're more than welcome to do so it is at the general KK I'll have it on the screen right here so you can always tweet me with any questions things like that and as I move through the HIM field, health information management field, and I find articles and things like that, I'll post them on Twitter. So you can always find some fun information. Well, I have to start to get ready for work. <laughs> so excited. And I will let everyone know via Twitter. And I might even make a video tomorrow or something after my first day in medical records to let you all know what it was like. And I will share any new information as I'm learning on this job, because it may be really important for you guys. Bye.